Hello students, welcome to this video, uh, concluding video for chapter 2, linear programming model formulation. So we're going to go over some um, terms and then a couple examples to illustrate some of those new terms. So let's see what we have here. Um, briefly mentioned this in the chapter 2a, the first part of chapter 2, um, series of videos we have and this was mentioned a little bit in the chap the second part chapter 2b when we talked about uh, minimization but we have two different types of variables either surplus or slack the examples we'll go over will illustrate these much better but slack variables um, well we can write all of the constraints in a standard form either adding or subtracting uh, uh, an extra variable to make it equal. So that variable in which we have to add to the constraint is considered as or defined as a slack variable. It is added to the to the um, less than an e uh, and equal to constraints. So it's never always just a, a constraints and maximization problems. As I've said, usually in a maximization problem, we have the less than equal to signs, but not always. So any question that has a less than an equal to sign has a possible slack uh, variable. It's basically unused. It uh, measures the how, how much of the resource has been unused. Whereas a surplus variable, it's the opposite. You, um, it's it's always found in the inequalities that are have the uh, greater than and equal to signs. Most of the time, those are minimization questions, but there's some questions where we're going to have both types of inequalities in our uh, decision problem. So surplus variables um, are subtracted from the greater than equal to constraints. Um, they don't represent uh, anything. Represents represents an excess. We have too much. We didn't need everything in the whatever that constraint was. And we'll go over some examples uh, in this video. And then as we move into chapter three, we'll see it more so. There are some irregular types of linear programming models. Um, in, the, in these uh, examples, there's some special types, multiple optimal solutions. You know, we've gone through the point of trying to find the objective, the optimal solution at points A, B, or C, for example. Uh, situations where there's two points that are equal, we're going to have multiple optimal um, solutions, and that's that's possible. We could ha have something called in infeasible and unbounded. Those last two are more common. Infeasible uh, is basically a situation where there is no possible um, solution Unbound is a, a specific type where there's no limits. So let's look at a couple examples here. This is the infeasible problem where every solution, possible solution, violates at least one alternative. So let's see if I can. Yep, there's my mouse. So it's a maximization problem. So maximization problem, we want to get as far away from the origin from point zero zero as possible. We're trying to maximize our profits. It's subject to our first constraint, 4x1 plus 2x2, which is uh, less than or equal to 8, which is down here. So basically, this is basically saying we cannot go past this boundary line. Anything in here is feasible. Point B would not be feasible. Because we have a less than or equal to sign, this constraint could have a possible slack surplus. We'll get into that again later on. Whereas the second constraint, x1 is greater than 4, that's measured right here. This constraint going straight up. Basically, that's shown that has to be on the right side. It has to be greater than 4. So the possible answer for x1 has to be 4 or more. Well, right away, we can see that the first constraint is showing that it has to be less. It has to be in this section here. But the second constraint is showing that it has to be greater. The third constraint, x1 is greater, or x2 is greater than 6. Likewise, basically showing x2 has to be at least, at least 6, somewhere up here. So point C is feasible. 
four point, four constraint, second, the second and third constraint. Point B, but point C is not possible or feasible for the first constraint. Point B um, is not possible um, for any constraint. So in this question here, there's no possible solution. So we've either entered the constraints wrong or we're trying to do the impossible. Unbounded problem. Once again, this is a maximization problem. So we want to get as far out from the origin as possible. There's two constraints here just to illustrate that this problem just does not have a boundary. It's limitless. X1 has to be greater than 4. So they've drawn X1 here has to be greater than 4. So everything in this blue shaded in region is feasible. X2 has to be less than 2. Basically it's showing this horizontal line going across has to be less than 2. Well, right now, if it's a maximization problem, we want to produce as much as possible to maximize our revenue or maximize our profit. Why would we produce at this point here when we can go out this way? And we can see that there's no boundary. Ignore the this line here. This is just the objective function drawn as a straight line with the slope and intercept here. But ignore those lines here. We're only focused on the horizontal, going across, and the vertical. There's no boundary. Why would we produce at this point when we can just keep on going and producing an infinite number of X1 products? That's why it's unbounded. There's no boundaries. So there's some various properties of linear programming models. Um, proportionality, uh, the rate of change of the objective function on constraint equations is constant. We can look at this, and this is what all of these uh, lines here represent, um, that there is no, um, that there's no uh, change in them. The, the, this line here is the, um, has this, this is the slope of the objective function. That's why they are all equal. It's just trying to uh, show that the objective function has um, a constant slope. additivity terms in the objective function and const and constraint equations must be additive which means that um, best way to explain that is um, let's say if you're making two products and you just make more of product one it does not alter the requirements for making the other one. Now, this doesn't mean that the constraints all have to have a plus sign. It means that um, the total resource use is, is the sum of the resource for all the variables. So if you use more of one, it doesn't decrease the requirements for the other one. I think that's a good way to um, explain that. Divisibility. Um, this assumes that all decision variables can take on any non-negative value from zero up. Um, it can be fractions, but it cannot be negative. So it is possible to, to have as your optimal solution x1 equals 3.5 for example. Certainty, oops, uh, values of all the model parameters are assumed to be known with certainty, non-probabilistic. So these, uh, yeah, the values are known to each other. Uh, there's no randomness. That's another way of saying that. So here, a couple examples we're going to go over. For, for this one, we are just going to um, formulate the model. We're not going to solve it. So in, in this uh, example uh, from your textbook, we are 
producing hot dogs out of chicken and beef. So the hot dog, every time we make a batch of hot dogs, we are making exactly a thousand pounds. So there's two ingredients, chicken and beef. Chicken costs $3 a pound, beef costs $5 a pound. We need at least 500 pounds of chicken and at least 200 pounds of beef. I'm not sure why those are in quotation marks. It probably has something to do with the fact that we're creating hot dogs. Uh, this other constraint to the ratio of chicken to beef must be at least two to one. Determine the optimal mixture of ingredients that will minimize cost. So the key word there is minimize. That's our purpose. Let's go into, um, oops, let's go into this, into this, and we will write down our objective function, and we will just formulate the model. Minimization problem, 3x1 plus 5x2, subject to two const uh, three con four constraints. 3x1 plus, oops, sorry, that is the objective function. Subject to, um, yeah, four constraints. We need at least 500 pounds. At least means greater than, equal to, and greater than 500 pounds of chicken. There we go. My memory is terrible. So this is our chicken. And beef, we need at least 200 pounds. Third constraint is that we, we make these two products in batches. So we want to make exactly 1,000 pounds. So it is possible to have a uh, constraint that has an equal sign. So the sum, the, the sum of our chicken and beef products we're creating have to equal 1,000 pounds. Our fourth constraint, I'll take a little practice to, to write this one, but it says, let's go back to our notes here, the ratio of chicken to beef must be at least two to one. Chicken to beef must be at least two to one. So let's go back into that. So chicken, which is x1, and we have x2, which is beef. The ratio of chicken must be 2 to 1. So to make this equal, we're going to have to put a 2 value there. This basically means that the amount of chicken we produce has to be a ratio of 2 to 1, which means that we're producing more chicken. We're producing twice as much. So two times the amount of beef is going to equal our chicken. When we write constraints, we always put x1 and x2 on the same side. So let's go x1 minus 2x2, and on the right side is going to be 0. It said that the ratio must be at least. So we're going to have this equality sign there. So that's going to be our fourth constraint. And that's the ratio constraint. So good practice writing um, or formulating some constraints with when they have uh, ratios involved. The next video will um, go over an example, uh, one final example for chapter two, which involves, I believe it's a uh, maximization problem but with uh, uh, three or four different constraints.